Huawei has announced the follow-up to the amazingly popular budget G300 with the Ascend G330. And OK, the only change I can see is that it launches on 4.0 ice cream sandwich. Nice, but let's move on. Yes, another device with a really great battery life has been announced about flipping time. Lenovo has announced the IdeaPhone P770 with 3,500 mAh lithium polymer battery in a 12mm body. And it comes with Android Jelly Bean out of the box. Other specs are modest though with 4.5 inch QHD display, 1.2 gig dual core processor, 4 gigabytes of storage plus micro SD and 5 megapixel camera and global sales aren't guaranteed. Oh well, great to see companies using a few extra mils for battery though. Whoa, it's big. It's red. It's heavy. It's something out of Angry Birds. I think, or maybe it's the Nokia Lumia 920, the flagship of its new Windows Phone 8 range. Heck, the flagship for the entire operating system, which means it's time for a review of both in 10 minutes. Gulp. <laughs> to evaluate Windows Phone 8 and the Lumia 920 properly, though, you and I are going to have to forget a few prejudices and expectations just for a moment. For starters, Windows Phone 8 is more complete than version 7.5, but it's still not as powerful or customizable under the hood as Android or even Symbian. Get over it though, it's still fast and pretty usable. The camera, despite the pure view branding, isn't a patch on the Nokia 808 or N8s though, get over it, it is still very good as you'll see. The range of third party applications is good, around 120,000, but still not as complete as the iPhones. Get over it though, I found all I needed, though I do accept that the likes of Spotify and Instagram may be missed by some people. And for me in particular, the battery here is sealed and you can't expand the storage memory. I'm getting over it, <laughs> which is not to say that you or I actually have to compromise. It's just that the OS and even this device are possibly not targeted at me or even you. The Lumi 920 is certainly not my perfect smartphone had I created a wish list, but it's also fairly usable once you've got your head around some of its quirks. And most of all, Windows Phone remains just about the best smartphone platform to hand over to an interested newcomer. The devices won't necessarily cost the earth, there's very little to go wrong, social is built in, there's plenty of games and everything's well very swipey and swish and swipey again. The 920 is the most brutish of the Windows Phone 8 bunch though at 185 grams. You may have seen the video where it's used as a hammer to drive in a nail, screen down. Yes, it's a solid polycarbonate shell with the innards inserted and then covered in a convex sheet of Gorilla Glass with super contrasty Nokia clear black display polarizers. It's 768 by 1280 pixels at 4.5 inches, so around 330 pixels an inch. I defy anyone to spot the raw pixels. Nokia's claim is that its capacitive screen is super sensitive. It certainly works with fingernails here or through materials, but don't go crazy, plastic won't work. The unibody construction does mean that the 920's lines are kept very clean with just a volume, power and camera shutter buttons down here on the right, plus headphones on the top and micro USB on the bottom. They do note that the corners are quite sharp. They're curved in only one plane only, so are a defined right angle when viewed from above or held in your palm, rather digging in. The Lumi 920 does have a reassuring heft in the hand. I'm guessing lots of metal inside. Size and weight is just about okay for me, but I would understand some people in particular drawing the line somewhat below 185 grams. Uh, so yes, the battery seal, 2000 milliamp hours, seems about right. It gets me through the day just about, but there's no way on earth it would ever manage two days. As would my old sob Symbian based Nokia's. There's the option of key inductive charging, but the review device didn't come with a charger, so I'll get back to you on that. Wired charger here by the bottom is still quite a bit faster though. The camera is a controversial unique selling point here on the Lumia 920. Nokia are branding it with the same pure view label as the 808. Look, I get what Nokia means. This also uses some clever technology to improve captured photos, but the 920's results in many light conditions and situations, they aren't really a patch on shots from the 808 and even the N8. The party piece here though is the optical image stabilization, completely eliminating camera shake as often inflicted by new smartphone users and meaning better low light shots of static scenes in particular as the shutter can be open for longer. OIS is great to have, but away from that, this is ultimately just a, a one third optical format sensor device on the same performance plane as the likes of the Galaxy S3, Apple iPhone 5 and so on. So very decent, but well, I suspect the branding debate will rage on for a while yet. 
It's a bitterly cold day here in the UK. This is testing video capture 1080p on the Nokia Lumia 920, continuous autofocus and also optical image stabilization. So hopefully I'm pretty steady even as I move around. Um, do look out for more video examples from this phone on allaboutwindowsphone.com where I'm going to go into a lot more detail. Media generally is a Windows Phone 8 and Nokia strong point with a pretty decent mono speaker here. I'll demonstrate it. Well, not bad. Not quite the uh, bass and treble of the Nokia 808, but not bad. And surprises of all surprises here, there's excellent codec compatibility. I just plugged this into a Windows Phone 7 laptop, 920 appeared as a disc, and I dragged on eight gigabytes of videos, and they all played perfectly. No transcoding needed whatsoever. Phew. The disc trick, by the way, doesn't work with a Mac. Windows drivers are needed to talk to the phone's internal file system. You get 32 gigabytes inside, which is quite generous and should be enough for almost all users. No predictable micro SD rant from me here. Connectivity is good with Pentaband LTE and Quadband 3G, plus the usual Wi-Fi here in dual channel form, plus Bluetooth and F NFC. This thing's got the lot, it seems. Pity the Wi-Fi insists on turning off shortly after the screen goes off if there's no media playing meaning either an eight second connection delay when you power the screen on again or plenty of ad hoc cell data use when the screen's off, all coming out of your data tariff. Apparently, Microsoft are going to address this feature in the near future. And the NFC here is just as proprietary as implementations on other platforms. 920 can't even exchange things with other non-Windows Nokia's, such as my 808 PureView shooting this show. All OS manufacturers need to pull their fingers out here, I think. Sadly, Windows Phone 8 is full of such delightful discoveries. Live tile notification numbers still get reset to zero when you so much as think about glancing at their contents. The volume keys still act for both multimedia and phone rings. You either have to have your music and games at max volume or your phone rings at half volume or keep adjusting up and down all the time. When playing music, you can't adjust how it sounds without taking three taps and two large swipes into the depths of the system settings. And sometimes the speaker will be used even when headphones are plugged in, which has got to be a bug. My wife getting woken rudely by this at 5 a.m. can attest. Despite having excellent music and media codecs, if you tap on MP3s and MP4s online, you sadly get an error message. Sorry, we can't play this file, which just makes no sense. About half the apps here, plus the start screen, all don't work in landscape mode still. The recent apps list is still limited to seven entries, and there are still far too many updating, resuming animations than I'd like to see. Some apps do use a fast resume system, but as Microsoft left it so stupidly late to release the SDK, I'm not surprised that most apps still behave just as they did under Windows Phone 7. Happily, Windows Phone 8 does have some useful improvements over version 7. The home screen is now wider, though still not filling the display completely. Why not, Microsoft? And you can fiddle around tweaking tile sizes and positions to your heart's content. Nokia Maps and Drive here can now at least share the downloaded map data, and Drive is as superlatively impressive as always. Nokia also supplies an ebook reader, a public transport aid, the city lens, augmented reality, and more while Microsoft supply a pretty comprehensive cloud-centric version of Pocket Office as standard. Accessibility is improved and you can now set up some truly huge fonts for all the standard apps if you're short-sighted, a bit like me, while Internet Explorer just gets better and better in terms of rendering speed. Uh, kids Corner is a nice idea for letting your kids loose on the phone and on car journeys, but the implementation here is buggy and far too easy to circumvent. While Rooms here is like a private intranet for your friends and family, but you got to have enough of them using Windows Phone 8 to do anything with this. Now, this is going to sound a little sacrilegious, but I didn't find Windows Phone 8 amazingly different in terms of experience from Windows Phone 7. Everything's just, well, bigger, faster and better than its predecessor. Progress, though. Who's the Lumia 924? I still don't believe it's perfect for geeks and fiddlers. Too much is still missing once you start looking too hard beneath the surface. Things you thought should be working and automated turn out to have been frozen or more usually terminated completely. The key is the mobile operating system here, the Windows Phone. 920 is for someone wanting their first easy to use smartphone, but also wanting the best they can buy, or perhaps someone who cut their teeth on a mid-range mass market Android device and was continually disappointed by the hardware quality and what they perceived as a confusing interface. 
or perhaps someone who has already heavily invested in desktop windows, SkyDrive and Office, for whom Windows Phone 8 is a great match. So that's three potential markets, though do note that the OS isn't 100% done yet. We're expecting numerous updates through 2013, many of them already teased by Microsoft. But Windows Phone 8 does indisputably provide a breath of fresh air in an increasingly iOS and Android dominated smartphone world. In the Lumia 920, Nokia has essentially taken the 2012 Touch Lab concept and, well, Nokia-fied it. <laughs> Better quality components, camera, speaker, screen, microphone, but chunkier and heavier as a result. It reminds me of a parallel from times past. I've got it. The Nokia N95 8GB <laughs> is the Lumia 920.